Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back. So today I'm bringing you guys a quick video just to explain to you how to use VPNs. Now, I know this may look intimidating, but it's as simple as just clicking a button and you're good to go. We just used a VPN. Now, if I go to any IP finder, it'll say that I'm also in Miami, not because I'm in Miami myself or physically, it's just because I'm connected to the ExpressVPN Miami server. And it works the same way with all the other VPNs. We've got Express Nord and Surfshark, three of the best VPNs for streaming, torrenting, and generally securing your data. So if you're looking for a good, reliable VPN, any of these will work, but I'll just talk a little bit about them to help you make a decision and teach you a couple of things about VPNs that'll help you use VPNs in general and just understand them. Now, what a VPN will do is route your connection through a server of your selection so that it makes it look like you're coming from that location. So in this case, let's say I wanna connect instead of Canada or Miami, let's just connect to the German server. So I'll connect to the German server. If I go to any IP finder, then it'll also say that I am now in Germany, not because I'm physically in Germany, but again, because I'm connected to the German server with ExpressVPN. Now, I personally like to use ExpressVPN because of its ease of use. As you can tell, it's incredibly simple to use. There's nothing complicated about it, unlike the slightly more complicated interface of NordVPN and Surfshark. That doesn't mean they're hard to use. It's just that ExpressVPN is that simple, but it's made to be so reliable and consistent that even advanced users will want to use ExpressVPN because of just how quick it is and how secure it is. So the way to use a VPN, again, is by just going to the locations, picking it and turning it on, and that is basically it. And you can just repeat the process with Nord and Surfshark by either zooming on the map with NordVPN or just looking through the list with either VPN. Now with ExpressVPN, you're just gonna have to go to locations. All we can do is click the three dots right here and it'll take you straight to the locations. And from there, you can pick a location. Now, as far as the options that you want to understand, you just want to understand what the kill switch and split tunneling are for and what protocol to choose. Now, as far as protocols, you can keep that on automatic. If you really just don't want to mess with the protocol options, again, keep it on automatic. And for the most part, it will connect to lightweight UDP, which is the best protocol. So that's why I just like to choose it right away. Now, with the kill switch, which is called network lock here, the kill switch is going to stop your internet connection if the VPN disconnects unexpectedly, making sure that you're only going to be connected to the VPN while you're secured by the VPN tunnel. Otherwise, the VPN will disconnect you from the internet connection to prevent any rare IP leaks. Now, split tunneling is going to allow you to choose which applications you want to route through the VPN and which applications you don't want to allow to be routed through the VPN, which is a very useful feature. So as you can tell right here, I like to keep my Google Chrome and Qubit Torrent, which is my torrenting client, always using the VPN while the rest of my connection is left outside the VPN tunnel. So it's a very useful feature and it's available with Nord and Surfshark, but unfortunately it's not available on Apple devices. So if you're on Mac, it's not going to be available on any VPN. And that's purely because Apple just does not make that possible on their devices. So now that you know what the kill switch and split tunneling are for, and I've demonstrated that with ExpressVPN, let's just test it with NordVPN. So let's say I want to use the kill switch and split tunneling in Nord. I can go to the kill switch right here, just settings, kill switch. You can enable the kill switch or disable it. Here you have the options if you want to disable the internet access when a VPN connection drops unexpectedly or when you manually disconnect from the VPN, which is a very nice option to have. And you also have the app kill switch, which will disconnect selected apps rather than the entire connection as it is with the conventional kill switch. So because we now understand the kill switch, we can operate it in other VPNs like NordVPN. Same thing with split tunneling. You can choose whether to disable the VPN or enable it for the selected apps. You select the applications and you can add them and you're good to go from there. And the same thing also applies with Surfshark, except that you have bypasser instead of split tunneling. And it's basically the same thing. It's just called bypasser in Surfshark. And you can select specific IP addresses or websites that you would like to bypass the VPN. So that's not a bad feature to have, like a little bit of a bonus feature on top of your split tunneling. And once you've selected your protocol, in this case, you want to make sure you're using the NordLynx protocol and the WireGuard protocol with Surfshark. Once you've selected that, you can just zoom in on the map and connect to a server. Um, let's just connect to the French server here. And it is basically as simple as that. So if I go to my IP finder here and refresh it, it'll say that I'm in France. And if I go to Netflix, it'll treat me as if I'm also in France because I'm connected to the French server. And it's the same thing with regards to accessing any other service, whether it's a streaming service 
or any other service that's not available in your local region. So that's basically it for this video. Hopefully you guys learned a thing or two in this video. If you did, please feel free to leave a like. And if you're interested in any of these VPNs, the find links to pricing, discounts, and full reviews in the description down below. And out of curiosity, I did ask ExpressVPN and they mentioned that a lot of people end up spending more money on the monthly plan than they would have with the yearly plan. Because it seems like most people thinking they're not going to need more than a month of a VPN service, they just go for the monthly plan. And they do end up using it for longer than a month, which ends up costing them a whole lot more per month. So if you know you're not going to need the VPN for longer than a month, definitely go with the monthly plan. But if you know you're going to need it for a little bit longer, then you probably want to save some money in the long term by going with a longer term plan. Either way, there's a 30 day money back guarantee in case you're not satisfied or if you change your mind. And all of that applies to all the other VPNs as well, not just Express. So comment below if you have any questions. I'll be happy to answer all of them. Again, like and subscribe if you'd like to support the channel and stay up to date with everything VPNs and cybersecurity. Thank you guys very much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Have a wonderful day.